I have been hurt by others, and I will hurt them. I will make them suffer like I have suffered. The words of a sadist, one of the most disruptive elements in human society. To have complete mastery over another, to make him a helpless object, to humiliate him, to enslave, to inflict moral insanity on the innocent. That is his objective, his twisted pleasure. Strange-looking place. What I thought, the fuel pump. How long do you think it'll take you to fix? It has to be replaced. Take about a half an hour if they have the part. You should have one with all these wrecks around here. This back highway is good for time, but have car trouble and you got problems. If it had to happen, I'm glad it happened where it did. And when it did, I didn't much relish the idea of being stuck in those mountains. They were lucky. Another few miles, we'd have been in desert. Is it what you thought, Mr. Stiles? I'm afraid so. Can we still make the game? Well, we've got 40 miles to go. 12.01. Game doesn't start till 1.30. We can still make it if they have the part. <laughs> and if they don't? It's plain stuck. If it wasn't Sunday, they could order one from Lancaster. Where are the people that run this place? Hello? You say when the player swats the ball? Not swats the ball, Doris. Bats. The player bats the ball. When the player bats the ball and it goes over the fence... That's a home run. Yes, I know, but if no one can make him out, why does he have to run around the bases? Because he has to. That's the rules. He must touch every base. Mm. Would you like a Coke? Oh, thank you. Somebody could run off of the whole place, and the owner would never know it. Okay. Sure, thanks. From the looks of things, nothing around here worth taking. It's a wonder they get any business at all. Everything is so dirty and greasy. All work isn't white collar work, Miss Page. I was in the army. 
I had my fill of this, repairing tanks. This prim and proper should have known me then. Doris Page is a sweet girl, Ed. And a good math teacher. A little on the prudish side, perhaps. Oh boy, my this Ed class calls him his ice buckets. <laughs> I think that is a silly rule. There is no reason why a man should have to run down the bases when they can't get him out. Isn't that a woman for you? Never seen a baseball game and already she's changing the rules. <laughs> you should go to a ball game with my wife. But I still think that's a silly rule. If you're ever going to see any baseball today, where's the guy that runs this place? be around here someplace. Doesn't seem likely they'd go away and leave everything wide open. Perhaps they're around and back someplace. Hey, anybody here? Hello? Hello? The pump hasn't already been stripped off that Chevy. We might be in business. Got ourselves a fuel pump if it's any good. Will that work on our car? Take a few adjustments, but you get us to LA. I'll borrow a few wrenches and we'll soon be out of here. Mr. Stiles has many talents. A fine young man. Be a lucky woman that hooks him. Well, Mr. Oliver, I do believe you're. Playing Cupid again. You're only young once, Miss Page. Why, Mr. Oliver, you sound like an old man. Well, 52 yesterday. Well, I'd say you'd had a fine and full life. A nice home, a lovely wife, two handsome children. Carl Jr. graduates from West Point in two weeks. Wife and I are going back for the graduation. This guy really takes care of the tools. I wonder where these people are. I'll look around and see if I can find it somebody. I don't want to shock you, Miss Page. But I'd rather not get my shirt dirty. Oh, really, Mr. Stiles, I'm not that stuffy. I don't know. Taught at the same school for over a year, and it's still Miss Page and Mr. Stiles. I do think Ed and Doris would sound a lot better. From now on, it shall be Ed and Doris. <laughs> Just a snake skin they shed this time of year. I can't stand snakes. <laughs> Most people can't. Part of the country's loaded with them. Big ones. I hear they get to be as much as nine feet long. <gasps> well, I was certainly wrong, wasn't I? Hello? Anybody here? Hello?
Doris? Ed? Hello? Hello? You never know he's the same history teacher from old Lancaster High. He really cuts loose. Today, he'll really be in his glory with his red flame. I know. Edna told me last night that he hasn't seen them play since they left Cincinnati. She said ever since he got the tickets, he There's said... something going on here that just isn't right. Settings for four at the kitchen table, two plates eaten from and two plates untouched. Pie still warm. Except for a cat, there's not a sign of life. The sooner we get out of here, the better off I'll feel. Just keep working, mister. Because you're going to fix your car just like you intended. Young man, you have no right to take our car. Shut up. What if I don't fix it? You'll fix it all right, mister. You better not take too long, either. Supposing I get it fixed, what happens then? Me and my girl go away. It won't bother you. How do we know you'll keep your word? Looks like you're just going to have to take it. Ain't you, mister? <laughs> you give me a wallet. Not much, but you're welcome to it. But we're only school teachers, young man. You hear that, Judy? We're only school teachers. We don't like school teachers. Do we, Judy? Teachers think they're so much smarter than everybody else. You have our money. Isn't that enough? What else do you want? Just keep working, mister. <laughs> Teachers used to call Judy dumb. Fun of it. Then 
to home from school crying. You're a pretty good size, boy. I wonder how tough you'd be without that gun. Ooh, you're one of them real big talkers, ain't you, mister? All right, big talker. Hand over your wallet. Come on! Pick it up. You pick it up. You a real big man in front of your lady friend. But I'm gonna show her just how big you really are. Put down that gun and I'll show you how big you are. I'm giving you three seconds, mister, to do what I say. I'm saying you pick up that wallet. One. Two. Please do as he says. You put it on the fender. Or do you want the gun, huh? You want the gun? <laughs> on the fender. Big man, huh? I guess you got showed how big you really was. Start working. you even have the decency to let me care for this man? What kind of a person are you? Do you enjoy hurting others, seeing them in pain? How can you be so, so inhuman? Thank you going. This man needs help and he's gonna get it if you want this car fixed. Right, you wouldn't be here. If we can get you some water and in the shade, we can stop the bleeding. What about letting this man get in the shade? <laughs> How can you be so cruel? You get back in that car, he won't be needing nothing. Oh, by all means, enjoy your lovemaking. 
But the least you can do is allow a suffering man a little water. Carrying on like that when you're no more than an animal. You get your dirty hands off me. You leave her alone if you want that car fixed. Uh, and he won't fix it unless you let us get some water. There's a pump by the house. You get working in that car, mister. And you. Go ahead. Shoot if they move, Judy. If I hear a shot, your girlfriend is dead. Don't get no ideas. Judy don't know how to use a gun. I wonder why he changed his mind. Ed, I don't like this. I know something else you won't like, Carl. Remember reading last week about those brutal killings in Arizona? Why are you putting us through this torch? You have our money and you're taking our car. Isn't that enough? You keep your dirty hands off me. You think you're so much better than me. You kind of all think that way. You call me inhuman. All right, I apologize. I shouldn't have said that. Now, will you let me go? Call me an animal. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I said those things. Now, can I go? You're sorry, but you still think it. You think I'm dirt. You think Judy's dirt. You'll always think it till you don't think no more. <gasps> Your kind means nothing. You hear? Nothing. <sighs> Why don't you scream? Maybe the big talker will come and help you. 
Maybe Miss Goody Good Good still thinks she's so much better than me. How does it feel to be touched by dirt? Huh? Goody Good Good don't like it. Taste it! Taste it! Eat the dirt! Taste it! Miss Goody Good don't think she's so much now, does she? She don't mind being touched by dirt. <laughs> what did he do to you, child? It's all right, Mr. Oliver. It's all right. You want that car fixed, you can do it yourself. Starting to be the big man again, huh? You're the big man, Tibbs. That's the name, isn't it? Charlie Tibbs? The big man who killed seven people? Made them get on their knees and shot them in the head? The paper calls you a thrill killer. It must be a real thrill to wipe out a family of five. How many thrills have you had since you left Arizona? What about the people here? Did you kill them too? How long do you think you can keep getting away with this, son? The law's bound to catch up with you sooner or later. And the law has ways of handling murderers. Please don't antagonize him anymore. What's going to happen Please to you? Don't. If anybody opens him up again, I'll blow their brains out! Now listen, big man. You get back to fixing that car, you're going to be a big dead man fast. All of a sudden, everybody's becoming the big talker. Getting kind of brave. Nobody wants to talk no more, Judy.
<laughs> Just a little target practice. <laughs> going to do something terrible. I just know it. <laughs> you get up. Gonna do. Shut up. Move. That's far enough. Down on your knees. On your knees. Seeing is how you like to talk. Go ahead and talk. Talk all you want. As soon as I finish this. You're going to be through talking. School will be out for you, teacher. Better start talking, mister. The time's running out. You can't shoot me like this for no reason. For nothing. Surely blowing my head off can't give you a thrill. Is it money you need? I have close to $2,300 in the bank. Tomorrow you can call my wife. She'll give it to you, all of it. You and your girlfriend can have a lot of fun on $2,300. He sure is talking a lot different than he did a while ago. Any he, Judy? You have a father, don't you? Would you want someone doing this to him? <laughs> Think of your own father in my place. Or yours. Save your breath on her, mister. I'm the only thing in the world she has. Her old man's dead. And her old lady's a drunk. Young lady. Can't you realize this is wrong? You love him, don't you? You know what it is to be around someone you love and who loves you? I have loved ones, too. A daughter a little older than you. A son about his age. Please. I beg of you, talk to your boyfriend. Tell him this is wrong. 
sell him, please. My God, child, haven't you any feelings at all? Can't you understand? Look at him squirm, Judy. They all look like, ain't they? Yellow when they go. You just can't wipe out a man's life like this. Not like this. You can't let him do this. Maybe he'll listen to you. Talk to him. And talk to him. Anthony, won't do something. Somebody, do something. Tell him he won't fix the car. Don't let him do it. If you want the car fixed, maybe the big man wants to take your place. If he says one more word, he will. What about it, big man? You feel like talking? Maybe Miss Goodgood wants to take his place. I guess nobody wants to take your place, mister. School's out, teacher. No, no, please. And the stage. <laughs> Shut up! Shut up yourself! God, you can control of yourself! Do you coward! Doris! Don't touch me! Doris, you're gonna get us both shot! I don't care, I don't care! Why did you go ahead and shoot? Go on, shoot! Go on, go on, shoot, shoot! I don't care! <laughs> <laughs> huh? <laughs> in another couple of minutes, I'll have the pump out. Shut up! It won't take very long to put it in the other car. I said shut up! You're going to need that car now, and I'm the only one that can fix it. I ain't waiting too long. Judy, go get me a soda. And that pie, too. How will anybody be able to tell his son's graduation? Doris, believe me, I feel as badly as you. He's dead. Nothing can bring him back. We're alive. We've got to think of ourselves now. Do you think I wanted to stand there and watch him die? What could I do? What could anyone have done? You can't reason with that kid. He wants blood, Doris, and nobody's going to talk him out of it. Don't you understand what we're dealing with? He's a psycho, Doris. Well, should I have taken his place? Would that have made you feel better? What would you be saying to Carl if it was me lying over there? Just 
run. The highway is only a few yards from here. He cut us down before we got five feet. I'll die running before I get on my knees like... I can still see him drinking that. Find a way to make them stop that. Doris, miracles do happen, but you can't count on them. I'm sorry. Now listen. I'm going to try to find out how many more shots he has left, or if he has reloaded or not. But how will we find out? Four shots we know of. That leaves four. He probably shot the people here, too. There must have been two. Remember what Carl told us about the settings in the kitchen? Yes. Two plates eaten from them and two plates untouched. Tibbs must have surprised them while they were eating. They were too frightened to eat while those two were stuffing themselves. He shot them. That leaves two shots. Well, he certainly didn't walk here from Arizona. Maybe he shot someone else. And if he hasn't reloaded... talk, mister. You talk all you want. You thinking somebody's gonna save you. Why should I fix a car if you're gonna kill us anyhow? You fix it. Cause that lets you live a little longer. Like back there. I knew you was stalling. If you'd wanna fix a car, you'd die right now. You want this car, Tibbs? Who are you fooling? Well, you can kill us, but you'll be stranded. That's a road, ain't it? Well, there's a road, there's cars. Somebody will pick us up. They always have. Is that how you got here from Arizona? The sailor picked us up. How far do you take it? Thought he was a real lover, huh, Judy? <laughs> Suppose you shot him, too. No, I just cut his throat. Why haven't you still got his car? Run out of gas last night. You sure asking a lot of questions, mister. But you go ahead and ask all you want. How did you get here? A farmer picked us up. His old crate broke down up the road a piece. Bad. I was beginning to like that old kaiju. Shoot him too? He sure prayed when he went, Judy. Remember? He reached for the sky and talked to the Lordy Lord. <laughs> then you shot him. Yeah. Right between the eyes. What about the two people you shot here? Did they pray too? You must think I'm dumb, mister. Don't know nothing. You're counting bullets. Count all you want. I can count too. You know I only fired seven shots. Only 
only got one bullet left. Unless I reload it. <laughs> How many bullets do I have left? Come on, come on. <laughs> You'd be mad. <laughs> come on. The one bullet's gone. <laughs> come on, maybe the gun's empty. Come on, miss, I'm giving you a chance. Come on, big man. <laughs> come on, mister. Come get the gun. What's the matter, you friend? <laughs> you had a chance, mister. You should have taken it. You ain't gonna get no more. See how yellow they are, Judy? <laughs> it's afraid of an empty gun. Big man. <laughs> Big talker. Hello, son. Sure a scorcher. Sure is. <laughs> 
Don't recall having seen you around here before, son. A friend of the family. Just talked to Milt's son in town about an hour ago. Funny, being the talker he is, didn't mention anything about visitors. Uh, he just left before I got in. Lancaster, huh? Yeah. Been working in the car. Fuel pump trouble. Mine went out only last week. You know, Jim, it cost over 30 bucks to get it fixed. Boy, what a crook that guy was. Look, somebody lost a 45 clip. Where's Milt? I'll back someplace. Well, he can get more parts out of a car than a factory put in it. Yeah, he sure can. I told you to keep quiet. Should have known what I told you. Get moving. I told you nobody could help you. You're gonna have every officer in California looking for you. They don't scare me. Nobody scares me. I'm gonna give you a choice, big man. You die now, or you fix that car. I'll give you 15 minutes to fix it. Why should I fix it? You'll only kill us when I get done. I'm giving you 15 more minutes of life, mister. If you don't want it, I'll blow your head off right now. There is two. One o'clock. You got until 1.15. You start working. They shoot two officers. There were two of them. Two of them. 
Judy, give me that gun. Fifteen minutes. What are we going to do? All units, all units. Be on the alert for two Arizona murder suspects believed to be in California. Possibly driving a green 1958 Ford sedan license number Mary Nora 46983. Suspects hitch a ride with the driver of this car, a sailor, en route to San Diego. The sailor was found murdered two miles east of Needles, approximately 10.30 this date. Tips, Charles A., male Caucasian, age 20, light brown hair, blue eyes, height 6'1", weight approximately 180 pounds, fair complexion, wearing Levi jacket and pants when last seen. This suspect is armed and to be considered extremely dangerous. In company with suspect number one is Bradshaw, Judy, female, Caucasian, age 18, black hair, blue eyes, height approximately 5'4", weight approximately 100 pounds, dark complexion, wearing a yellow flowered dress when last seen. <laughs> if only that radio call had come two minutes earlier. We've got to do something. Looks like we'll have to run for it. <laughs> Move closer. Get in front of me. I got an idea. It may not work, but at least it's a chance. It's obvious he doesn't know much about cars. Now look, when I get the pump in, I'll ask you to get in the car and start it. Leave it in neutral. I'll raise the motor from here. When I give you the first signal, uh, I'll scratch my shoulder. When I do, you shift into drive and push down on the brake. Got that? Yes. When I give you the second signal, I'll wink. And hold on tight because I'll be pulling the gas pedal to the floorboard. I'm going to try to lure him in front of the car. <laughs> oh, dear. It's just a chance. We might not hit him, but we can at least startle him and may give me the few seconds I need. Let's just pray this doesn't kick out on us. What if it does? Run for it. What if it won't let me get in the car? It's a chance we'll just have to take. You got 11 minutes. Doris? car with you starting it.
started so I can see if the pump holds pressure. Doris, get in the car and start it. Just a minute. You want the car to run, I want to live those extra few minutes. Now I have to check the pump for pressure. All right. But it better run good. Much more time. Two minutes. How does it feel when you're about to die? Try it now. Thank you, Yellow Belly. Yeah. One of them squirmers.
Peter. I said get out! Move. seconds ago, you must have did something. Look, this pump has been in a wrecked car for who knows how long. Now, sometimes they get clogged and don't hold the pressure. I should take it out and clean it. You ain't got time for that. It's not holding pressure. It needs to be cleaned. You're looking for time, ain't you? It won't take very long. You ain't taking nothing out. You think you're fooling me, don't you? They got to run nothing but cars, don't you? That thing right there, that's a carburetor. The car can't run unless there's gas in it. All you gotta do is prime it. Now I've seen that done. So you prime it. Well, go on, there's a gas pump over there. Start it when I tell you to. Nobody gets in that car but me. If I'm gonna prime it, somebody has to pump the gas pedal. Just never you mind. You just put that gas in that carburetor.
lots of good seats here for you fans who enjoy the Dodgers and the Red Lakes. If you're close by, won't you come on down? You'll enjoy it here at Dodger Stadium. A gorgeous day. Shirt sleeve crowd. Everybody having a wonderful time. Okay, we're set to go. The bases loaded. Bottom of the first inning. Ron Fairley up there. Perky, the great pitcher of the Red Lakes, set to go. He faces him. He has his sign. There's the windup. The pitch. Fairley belts it. Oh, what a smash. Frank Robinson is on his bicycle. He's going back. He turns and races toward the wall. Back, back, back he goes. 